Okay, so let's say you want to plot these 1, 2, 3, 4 angles. It's 120 degrees, 145, 55, and 40. What I would do is plot the smallest one first and then build up from there. Because if these four angles will fill the circle, um, I guess, let's see, let's just do a quick check. These 100 and 200, right? 20 plus 50 is 70 plus 40, right? That gives you 310, 350, 360. So I'm just adding these up in my head. Um, out loud, saying out loud, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, th these four angles, add them up, they'll add to 360. So if I just plot these one, two, three angles, the, the remaining space will be the, the last angle that I'll be about, which is the biggest. Uh, sometimes that'll really help. In this case, all the angles are fairly easy to graph, um, but that's just a general strategy. So I'm going to line up my protractor. Um, I guess even before I do that, the first thing I do, I'm sorry, is to set up a line on the graph, right, on the somewhere. That's our starting point. And that could be anywhere you want because now what you're going to do is line up your protractor on that line. So if I line up my protractor, right, I can begin by zeroing out my angle. So if you see here on the bottom is the zero, line up my protractor then. And then now just make sure the center dot is lined up. I could just mark right at 40 degrees. I'm going to follow the outer track of numbers because I'm opening my angle. So it should follow 10, 20, 30, 40 to get larger as I go along. The other track, notice, gets smaller. So that's going to be my 40 degree angle mark. And now I pull the, once I pull the protractor back and out of the way, I would just take my line tool to connect from the center of the circle to that dot. And this is basically how you use a protractor to build angles. So there's a 40 degree angle right there. And that's our smallest angle. You label it and move on. Now for the next angle, 55, the key is to line the protractor up so you're building off the last angle, right? So here is the last ray we had. We go from there. Now if I line this up, I think I've got a pretty good mark on it there. Now I'm going to mark at 55, right here. And then I just turn, or in this case, pull the protractor away and connect from the center of the circle to that dot. And that should be pretty much pretty good right there, 55 degrees. Just be careful not to move the protractor as you go along. Last, we have 120. So I line up my protractor one last time here. And there it goes. Again, I'm just making sure that it, it's centered nicely, which means that whatever the center point of the protractor is, it lines up with the middle of the circle. And wherever it says 0 degrees, that lines up with my starting line. Now, 120 is all the way over here. And again, the key is to mark it, right, with some, it could be outside the circle, inside, doesn't matter if your protractor is too large or too small. And then pull it away over here, and then connect the dots, and you're done. Right, just make sure it lines up. Now you'll have a ruler to make these connections, right, but then, and then here, of course, the remaining space is 145. And you can even test that, and you should test it, just to make sure that your, your angles are actually working out the way you intended them to. It's very easy to have your protractor be slightly off when you're doing this kind of stuff. So here, uh, I can tell that I'm right just by doing this, by lining up the protractor, just like that, and measuring. And you can see that it's slightly off, right? i just line this up. It's about 142. It's hard for you to see, I think. Um, but that's okay. You can get a couple of degrees of freedom. And it's 143. As long as it's close enough. It's about halfway. And there is some room for error there because we know the protractor moves whenever you write a line. Just be careful to be as accurate as possible. Thanks.